Hello, this is Greg Brzezinski for Beard Brand Alliance. Currently, long hair is having a moment for guys in fashion. Jumped on that train. Anyhow, let's talk about long hair through the ages. So indeed, long hair looks like it's having a moment. If you look around in fashion magazines and especially on Instagram, you will see a host of guys who previously had short hair or have continued growing their hair pretty long. You might recognize these guys, Mr. Uh, Renalit. Uh, we have uh, Josh John, tattooed guy who was famous for an undercut, has grown out his hair long. Uh, I think we're about the same length. Anyhow, these guys are actually setting some trends which are affecting what you may be doing in the future. Um, of course, I jumped on that train, and we'll talk about me in a little bit, but let's look back at long hair through the ages. Uh, long hair is not new. We're having a moment right now with guys growing their hair, but we have to go back to the dawn of time and to the caveman period to see that probably guys did not have a pair of scissors since there was no metal working going on at that time. And the only way to cut your hair would be probably to um, get rocks and put rub rocks together to cut it. So it's pretty likely that most guys uh, in prehistoric times had long hair. Um, guys would continue probably to have long hair through uh, modern times. And we're talking modern times of 1300 BC. We have Moses here uh, wearing um, a hairdo, I would say, uh, represented through the eyes of Hollywood on Charlton Heston in uh, the movie uh, the Ten Commandments. Uh, but guys probably were sporting long hair also um, because of lack of hair um, um, instruments to cut their hair. So fast forward, we're now looking at uh, the Viking. Um, the Vikings uh, historically were a vain group apparently, as uh, many Vikings have been um, um, discovered to have a comb placed in their grave upon their death. Um, interpretation here, uh, famous for Viking braids. And so we have uh, in 975 AD, the Viking represented with long hair here. Of course, we now have modern um, implements for cutting hair. So uh, guys started cutting their hair. A lot of uh, the reasons that men started cutting their hair was actually for hygiene reasons. Um, it was difficult to be taking care of long hair, especially if you were only bathing once every one week or every two weeks or once a month. Hair, as you know, gets pretty dirty within a few days. And so having short hair made it easier to actually do cleanup on hair. And so guys started sporting long hair. Outside of big cities, guys probably might not have had uh, the tools necessary, and uh, long hair continued to be popular, as in the highlands of Scotland. We have in 1745 here, sporting longer hair with um, black watch cape and hat. So guys cutting their hair were wearing it short. It was always seen as a crowning glory for a guy to have a full head of hair, a long head of hair. Um, there actually was reports of a syphilis outbreak throughout Europe in about the uh, 1590s, 1600. And actually, it brought on um, the use of wearing wigs. It wasn't until uh, King Louis XIII, who actually was hair challenged, or uh, at a very early age, at the age of 17, who actually started donning a powdered wig, the modern powdered wig that we saw through the 16th and 17th century. So that wig actually made its um, way completely to America. And so in revolutionary times in America, men would wear a powdered wig. Now young guys who had their hair and uh, had fuller, longer hair actually would wear their hair natural. But once again, because of hygiene, it became easier for men to wear a powdered wig. Um, so since they weren't washing their hair daily or every day and to dress your hair in a style that has these, um, you know, fussy curls and uh, pulling it back in a ponytail, it was easier to don a powdered wig. So represented here in the city of brotherly love, we have a representation of natural hair worn in the style of a powdered wig. Meanwhile, outside of civilization and outside of dry land, we have the mythical pirate donning long hair and uh, sailing the seas at around 1800, continuing to wear long hair, probably also because 
of lack of um, implements to cut hair, but also because water was available, men could wash their hair more, and so encouragement for guys who had um, abundance of hair to grow their hair a little longer. At that point in modern civilization, and we're talking Europe and we're talking in America and the rest of the globe, you see a abundance of short hair. Men obviously have scissors and men are actually seen as dishonest and deceitful, those guys wearing wigs. It became fashion unfashionable to wear wigs in about 1795 for those reasons, as well as a tax being placed on the elaborate powdered wigs that were, uh, men were wearing. So it became fashionable for men to not wear a wig. And you see actually the profusion of beards in culture for the first time. And that would go on almost for two centuries that men would be wearing their natural hair with some amount of facial hair. It wasn't until modern times, pretty recently, in the 1960s, in the 1970s, that you see men rebelling against that trend that had been going on for a couple of centuries and actually sporting long hair again. It actually was in rebellion probably to their parents who were wearing the conservative 1950s haircuts at the time, the barbershop haircuts, and you see men growing their hair all lengths. Long hair would continue to be in and out of fashion um, throughout the next two decades. Uh, men wore their hair fairly long and full in the 70s and in the 80s until barbershop haircuts came back into style in the uh, late 80s in the 90s and uh, the 2000s. It wasn't until um, the mid 1980s that there would be another strong movement for long hair as seen on fashion models, as well as the famous Fabio, who actually sported hair. And you actually cannot believe that it's real. So Fabio became famous in the mid 80s and beyond for his uh, long hair and also for his appearance on over 400 romance novel covers. As I said, um, long hair would be in and out of fashion. Um, what's happened in the past two decades, there's not been definitive um, styles of hair or beard patterns that you saw in previous generations. In the 50s, it was pretty much accepted that you would have a barbershop haircut. And very few guys would uh, grow their hair outside of maybe the beatniks or uh, subculture groups, but you would say 95% of men who would be wearing a very similar haircut. Throughout the 90s and the 2000s, men have had more freedom to wear their hair any which way they want, um, tending, trending now to being on the shorter side, but in high fashion, now looking a little longer. Those trends to start wearing their hair longer actually probably began in about 2012. The invention of Instagram probably made it uh, more accessible to see guys with longer hair, but guys started wearing hair pretty long as well as wearing beards and we have the quintessential um, teen, the 20 teens man bun as seen here. Had fun with that shot, and uh, it seems to be very popular even today, as evident by my recent Instagram post. So where is um, long hair headed now? Um, I actually am sporting this long hair, and I'm probably going uh, another two inches on my hair, at least. Keep on saying January 1st, I'll decide what I'm gonna do. Um, I've been getting a lot of favorable response uh, to my long hair, uh, but how do guys wear their hair long? So if you are a model, such as the men that I mentioned before, or a sports figure, and then you can wear long hair, it doesn't matter where, what you're doing, you have long hair. For a lot of people in business, uh, they want to wear their hair um, a little more con controlled. So I actually, in a boardroom setting, or if I'm wearing a suit and tie, or if I'm going to client meetings, I tend to wear my hair pulled back in a ponytail, looking fairly conservative, especially from the front. A lot of people don't realize that I have long hair until I turn to the side and you see the side. But for a casual look, I actually wear my hair down. I won't um, not wear this hair with a suit. I sometimes wear my hair um, down with a suit. Um, it's acceptable in today's society to be wearing your hair kind of any which way you want. The key with all of this uh, in today's current society is keeping your hair clean, whether that be your hair or your beard. It's how you present uh, the hair suit and the hair on your head in the best way that you can. And that's going to start with having clean hair and a clean beard. Um, properly dressed also uh, with uh, products. You know, I have uh, some uh, sea salt spray on my hair right now and um, some styling balm on my beard. Um, but it's presenting long hair uh, to its best by having it clean. So that's important. So there we go. We have a brief summary of 
long hair through the ages is seen as uh, the, through the eyes of one mop top himself. I'd like to thank my friend Dave, who actually assisted with photography and with um, all the costumes that you've seen in this picture. You can see his Instagram handle here. So what do you think of long hair on guys today? And uh, do you have a favorite period in history of guys wearing long hair? Comment below. I'd love to hear about it. Until we meet again. All right, guys, stop. Before you watch our next video, let me tell you, our sea salt spray. This product is amazing for your hair. It gives movable texture. It's like a dry shampoo, so if you go in between days of washing your hair, it'll help your hair extend a little bit longer, and it smells absolutely amazing. Find it over at beardbrand.com.